Hi everyone, uh, welcome to what's probably our last video of the year. Uh, we just want to show you the new features um, and things that we've put into the new Multigo Radium update. So we pushed it out last night. Uh, everyone should have got it automatically if they started up Radium uh, after last night or after it was pushed out. But if you didn't, you can just click on uh, the application icon or the globe, uh, go to tools and say check for updates. Uh, and it'll tell you if you've got the latest version or not. And if you don't, it'll download an update for you. So that's really nice. So we've done quite a lot of work on the server, um, improving a lot of stuff with confidence scores and using search engines. So it should be a lot more, um, it should be a lot easier to use and should give you a lot more intelligence. So just as an example, I'm going to take our friend Rafi and we're going to say, okay, for this person, I wish to find email addresses using a search engine. Um, I don't have a domain or TLD that I'm interested in uh, or an additional term that I really want to, to use here. I'm just going to say run. And that's now going to go and pull them the same as if you had put that into a search engine with things like contact or email and so on. Um, and you'll see that when the entities come back like this, uh, you'll see that a lot of the, the links now are different colors. Uh, and they're weighted based on the confidence. So you'll see that this one has a specific weight of 100. So that one was quite popular. This one is 92, uh, 79. And there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into determining those weights and saying how confident it should be in something. So obviously something like this is pretty common, but I know it's not accurate. I'm just going to relay that out. Okay. Um, so now I've got, let's say I'm, I'm interested in these top four because I know they were weighted um, you know, they were found to be the most important. So I can take these and I can say, uh, let's try verify email addresses. So it's something we did in the uh, previous video. And you'll notice now that we actually return uh, notes with our entities. So you get a bit more information straight on the graph. So here I'd say something like, cannot verify address, uh, cannot verify address, address is non-existent, so that doesn't exist anymore. And this address exists. So it's a really nice way to do it because you can see it straight on the graph instead of having to go to the detail view and have a look in the in the snippets and so on. Okay, so if we want to take it a bit further, I'll say, okay, I'll take these and let me just get the domains out of it. Okay, there the four domains come out. And I can say, okay, well, for these domains, let me see if I can get uh, email addresses from, say, the Whois information. Okay, so now these are going to come out. And again, you'll see that we've added a note here that says no email address in who is. Um, and if I want to, I can actually look at that who is information. So if I select the domain and I click on who is information here, you'll see that it says our server was captured, but you can go to um, this link and you can do it manually. And of course, you can add it in manually and process your investigation. But it's really nice to have that info on your graph, as I said. Okay, so if I look at these, um, Maybe this one is pretty interesting to me. So I'll say, okay, we'll take that to domain. And from there, of course, we have the same features as before. So I can run a machine like the Footprint L2 machine. And that's just then going to go into, you know, do all your basic DNS footprinting. So I'm not interested in those NS or MX records. And it will now resolve those to IP addresses. And it'll say, you know, it's going to take the IP addresses to NetBlocks using natural boundaries. Uh, what is the size that I want? Uh, am I interested in seeing anything else on that? Not today. And one of the nice things you'll see here is that actually for um, these IP addresses to NetBlocks, it shows you what the block size is that you use. So that's just some useful information when you're looking and saying, okay, well, why do I get a class C instead of a class B or, or and so on. Okay, then one of the other features that we've got in the tool that I don't think we've spoken about before is full screen mode. So if I'm doing a lot of stuff, I can now work on a graph in full screen mode. And of course, I have the same features as before. I can switch to something like bubble view um, and I can see what my graph looks like in terms of size. Um, and when I hover over nodes, I can also see the information there uh, over here. So I can see the various information. If I hover over something else, I can get it as well. So that's really nice if you're um, working on a big graph or if you're doing something where there's a machine that's putting out a lot of nodes and you want to see it happening um, and you want to use up all your screen real estate. Okay, then the other new feature that we've got is what's known uh, was essentially the start of collaboration in Multigo, but uh, it's uh, within the tool Find in Files. 
So what happens is that you and whoever else is working on an investigation can uh, save all your files in a central location. Uh, we're just using Dropbox at the office, uh, just for this example. So I can click on the application or globe icon, go to tools, and I can say find in files. And you'll see now that it gives me an option of where do I want to find, uh, if I want it recursive. And I can look for something here like the word pirate. So we've been working on this now. And you'll see there's now searching all the graphs that we have shared within our Dropbox. Um, and you'll see here that there's author Andrew and Ruloff. So we were sharing them in the office. And if I drop them down, I can see all the different nodes, uh, all the different entities within that graph that actually match that. So you'll see here this is Pirates of the Burning Sea. Uh, and if I double click on it, you'll see that it actually opens the graph, which is quite nice. Uh, and once the graph is open, if I double click on it, it'll zoom straight into that node. So I can use that to navigate and find out where everything is. Uh, then you'll see this one by Ruloff. Um, he also has the same entity. Uh, so maybe actually what has happened here is that Ruloff has found extra information on this and I can right click on that and I can say merge with the current open graph. So I'll say yes, I wish to merge this. And it'll give me the options of entity matching for how I want to merge them. So I wish to merge them. And now you can see that I've got different uh, views on it and if I just switch that to something like organic, um, then I can now zoom in and I can see, okay, well, this is what's been added and this is how it's all linked together. So it's a really nice way to collaborate with different users um, and something that we hope is going to get, you know, a lot bigger uh, as we work on it more. Okay, then the last thing I want to show is just that um, within the tool, if you go to the About screen, you'll actually see that uh, we've added something here that says your maximum heap size. So you can see how much memory you can allocate for the tool. It's just something uh, nice and small within there. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the new year. Okay, and the last thing, Shrilov whispers it uh, onto the screen, is that you can now uh, set metadata for graphs. So if I have a graph and I wish to set the metadata for it, where previously it was always uh, from the actual tool itself, I can click on Tools and I can say Graph Metadata, and then I can change it. So here you can see the author was Andrew, but I can change it to something else. Uh, if I wanted to change that information and share it uh, somewhere else. Okay, thanks guys. Um, enjoy the new year and uh, we'll see you next year.